This is Gospels, class number 11. <clears throat> and uh, I want to just read a few scriptures that are pertinent uh, to this in the book of Galatians, the end of chapter 4. <coughs> End of chapter 4, and then the first verse in chapter 5. And we'll look at uh, <coughs> verse 30 and 31. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? <coughs> well, that's good enough right there. If we didn't read any further. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's going to be a rough night. Well, that's the real deal. What does the scripture say? <coughs> Not does, what does man teach or anything else. But here it's being specific. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with which Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Make these classes really down to earth. I want them to be down to earth, so <laughs> I'm going to be hacking and, you know, I want you to feel like they're real, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll tell you what, folks, I'm, I'm good. I don't care what you say. <clears throat> we, went to, we went to Chick-fil-A. We're sitting there. We're eating. <clears throat> I'm still about half out of it with this whole thing. <clears throat> I don't even think I had my jacket off. French fry ketchup right there. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be cool with my jacket. <clears throat> Because I already am. Uh, <clears throat> but because I'm a bit flaky today and every day. All right, so um, this, is, this is a good scripture because it's, it is telling us to um, uh, to consider what the scripture says and not our opinion. And this is not just in general. Oh, theologically, <clears throat> let us consider the scripture. This is in a very practical thing. This has given us an example <clears throat> of Isaac and um, Ishmael. And it is related to us as to the covenants. And, um, and it has related that to... The son of the bondwoman, meaning <clears throat> he's born into bondage and is yet in bondage. As opposed to the son of the free woman. And that's relating, he says, that's us. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And then it says, yeah, stand fast. We're in Galatians 5 now. Stand fast, therefore. <clears throat> in verse 1, stand fast, therefore. If we're not under the old bondages, the old rules, and the old dominions and the old kingdom, then why is there still problems going on? And that, that's a real deal. And he says we're supposed to stand fast. If this is really true, if this is true, we should stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And, and that, can be, that can be seen in two ways. That can be seen <clears throat> as Christ making us free by being Lord. And as Lord, he, is, he has freed us. But, you know, he didn't free us as Lord. He became Lord. He freed us at the cross. But at the cross, there was a death and there was an exchange of life for us and that life is Christ and that life is the only life 
that is truly free. Truly free. I mean, free, free. So, so lordship, we've already discussed that. Lordship relates to a change of kingdoms. We, we looked at that even in a clearer light and said a change of dominions. And, and we tried to get practical, and I don't know how practical we got, but we want to get more practical tonight. <clears throat> and the reason why I want to and I desire to is because I, I am of the belief, and I'm, I don't count, but I'm of the belief that a whole lot of Christianity is just hoopla and doctrines that don't have any real application, and we all believe a set of beliefs, and we think believing a set of beliefs, not believing the reality that supposedly brought those beliefs around, but believing in the set of beliefs is, well, the end result of it is, is that it has no power and it has no effect. So I want to talk uh, sort of seriously, I guess, about um, if Jesus, is, if he is Lord, um, and he has brought us into a new kingdom, and that kingdom is the government of his own nature and his own life, and it is the results of what he did at the cross. And those results brought down other kingdoms and other dominions and other bondages. And we'll, we'll see. We'll look at some of them. Then why is there so much trouble with these, these same kingdoms today? And I say, well, a lot of it is that we haven't really, we haven't gone to the source of the victory, first of all, which is the cross, not Jesus sitting on a throne. Very few go to the cross, honestly, to, add, to, to find victory. They go to Jesus sitting on a throne. Christians today pretty much go to Jesus sitting on a throne and they go, help. Okay, but I mean, hasn't, I mean he hadn't helped yet. You know, I mean, think about it like that. I mean, has, oh, he really hadn't done enough. You, you hear this phrase, a finished work, but why are we running to the throne so much trying to get it worked out or, or worked? So, um, <clears throat> so that's what our endeavor tonight is going to be is to uh, entreat the Holy Spirit to uh, open our ears and, and our eyes and open our hearts and follow, be able to follow a line that he gave me. And if nothing else, if we can follow that line, then maybe we'll be able to discern that there are practical, clear-cut lines of liberty that have been given to us by Christ crucified. The one that God has set, now said, you're Lord, and therefore your kingdom will reign in these people. I mean, it sounds good to me. All right, so I'm going to read a little bit. This change of lordship is not simply theological, but specific, specific. All right, so this lordship, this kingdom of God is, is not future, it's, it's not theological, it is ever present and therefore will be in the future. That's undeniable. But, there are, but it is very specific, and if we can, as led by the Holy Spirit in our spirit, we can determine the paths that will keep us in liberty. 
A change of dominion has practical effects and it affects tangible areas. I mean, actual, I mean, the, the lay of this kingdom says we have defeated, it's like a, it's, it's like a, king now sitting on the throne and maybe he was not on the throne maybe he was sort of like Joshua who was you know the captain of our salvation and he looked at all of the inhabitants of the land and here were the Hittites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and the all those otherites and <clears throat> and he said okay we're going to we're going to take this and when when it was done he could look at all of the places that had other dominions, that was God's land. This is talking about us. I mean, it's talking about Christ taking ground in us in real ways, where there can be liberty to stand fast in, instead of liberty to be gained, to try to get, to, but to be stand fast. Therefore, I love that wording, especially according to what it said. Instead of working hard to get it. And, and when it was done, Joshua, our Jesus, could look at God's land and say, you know, there were these dominions before. And now there are no dominions, just God's land, you know. <clears throat> All right, so the justified have become so because they are liberated from the dominion. Okay, we're justified now because we're liberated from the dominion of the devil, the world, the law, sin, and a bunch more. Okay, that's, you remember us writing all those on the board. <clears throat> so that, I just gave you the short list. <clears throat> all right, so there's no news there. We've all been liberated from the devil, the world, the law, the flesh, sin. Theologically, we have been. All right. But by what means does this liberation take place? A liberation that we can stand fast in. Mm. Oh. Just by standing fast in it. Praise God. As stated previously, <clears throat> all is accomplished by being dead to them. Dead. All of those kingdoms, instead of beating them up, we die. I mean, now, there's not a lot of people that accept that this day and age, but didn't, it, didn't the scripture we read, read right here in verse 30 in chapter 4 say, nevertheless, what saith the scripture? <clears throat> the, scriptures are, the scripture is meant to change our minds. We're not supposed to be changing the scripture. It's, we're supposed to readjust to what it says and go, oh, you know, the first thing to say is, oh, if that's what it says, I just read it. Instead of justifying that away and say, well, that doesn't fit with this scripture over here. Well, if they're both in there, we need to find out what it means. You don't just go, well, you know, I'm safe with my 12 scriptures. You know, there's a whole Bible. You know, most chapters have more than your 12 scriptures, <laughs> much less books. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so <clears throat> Joshua, before he takes the land, looks out over there. Instead of seeing Hivites and Hittites and all that, he sees 
the law and he sees sin and he sees the world and he sees the flesh and he sees the old nature, he sees all of those dominions and this is what we're supposed to see. We're not supposed to, we're not supposed to see doctrinal categories. We're supposed to see enemies, you know? And we're supposed to say, you know, I, we're supposed to say, I love you, Jesus, and I want to serve you, and I don't want problems, but I see all these enemies running around in your land, me. And I know I've been bought with a price, meaning I am your possession, but, you know, what can I do? Well, the answer is nothing. You can't do anything. I mean, you know, remember the rich young ruler coming to Jesus. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're the son of a rich kid, you don't do anything to inherit. You're in the family. Well, you're in God's family. You know what I mean? You don't have to, you know, you don't do something to inherit it. What must I do to inherit? So Jesus said, well, I'll tell you, if it's, if it's about doing, then do this. Sell everything you got, da 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 He lays the law on him, and the guy goes, I can't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? What shall I do? Well, do this. And he went away and didn't do any of it. And not just, you know, <clears throat> you know, and that wasn't the devil that he went to. He went to Jesus, and Jesus showed up all of his lack of commitment when he probably thought don't I mean come on don't you think he thought he was really I'm 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 a good catch here I've got I'm rich I'm young I'm a ruler I've got it all man what do you want me to do well just sell everything and leave your ruling and come follow me what you know and there goes his commitment and there goes his <clears throat> his um, benefit to the kingdom of God because he's holding on to old kingdoms that are going to bring him down later on. But when, <clears throat> when sometimes Christians are confronted with things that show them up, show that they've got problems, show that they're not as committed as they were, they don't like that. I don't want to hear that. I want to go to a church that's going to make me feel good and powerful and you know, like a, I'm a soldier of the Lord and I'm going to march through the land and I'm going to, you know, we're going to just take the land. Well, we're the land that's being taken. And he's not killing off Satan. We're being, de Hebrews 2.14, that through death he destroyed him that had the power of death. Not, destroy, not killing Satan. Satan wasn't crucified. Isn't that interesting? I mean, what kind of deal is that? You know, Jesus goes, well, let's see. There's uh, somebody's going to die here. It's kind of like the difference between Jesus and Barabbas. Well, the difference between you and Satan. Uh, who's going to die? Who am I going to put on a cross? Let's see. Satan, you're off the hook. How about you? Come here. Can you hear us now? What are you talking about? This guy from the very beginning, man, he's caused all of his problems. And, man, I'd have, I mean, okay, I've done some stuff, but not like him, for God's sake, you know. He goes, you mean for my sake? <laughs> for God's sake. <clears throat> I mean, you could. <laughs> well, it's like if Jesus sneezes to this God, say, God bless you, or... Or does he just say, bless you? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I remember when I was genuinely confronted with that. that just that. Just that thing of Satan was never crucified. Jesus could have crucified him 2,000 years ago and all the problems would be over with. No, they wouldn't. We would still be here. You know? Well, it's, it is the truth. You know? Maybe he wasn't so dumb after all. Maybe the Lord actually knew what he was doing. And maybe what he was doing was trying to help us 
by first showing us that we've, we're the problem. We're the enemies in the land, and Christ is trying to take the land and fill up every part that he might fill, be the fullness that filleth all in all. That he might be the length and the breadth and the height and the depth, and that everywhere he put his foot in us, but, but the way that he puts his foot, because casting out the bondwoman, you know how that happened, don't you? Well, historically, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way the bondage was broken, excuse me, broken was the cross. When Jesus took us and put us to death, and now Isaac, well, who's that? Well, that's us. No, it's not. Galatians 3.16. I know you know John 3.16. Do you know Galatians 3.16? Can you quote it? Now, well, read it out loud. That, well, you know, the next one is good, but the one after that is good, and the one after that, and we can just keep going. But yes, go ahead. <laughs> See if you can find a bad scripture in there. The thing I'm saying is, is that these that the land to be possessed is being possessed by our Joshua, which is Jesus. He's possessing and filling this land with himself. And the liberty is as each part of what we were and our dominions fall to this king, to this Jesus. And the enemies fall. Um, read Galatians 2.19. Okay. okay. I through how do we defeat the law? I through the law am dead to the law. The law didn't die. I through the law am dead to the law. How dead are you? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> You know what? The, the next verse will answer that. Somebody read that one. Verse 20. <laughs> Deb, go ahead. Okay, so in verse 19, you're dead to the law. In verse 20, you're just dead. Do you see what I mean? Because, uh, and I'm, here's the reason why I'm pointing that out is because I remember when I was studying these things and, and I would read 219 and it says, you know, that I am dead to the law and I go, praise God. Which, what did that mean to me? That meant that the law, basically, I mean, honestly, if you really translate it correctly the way we really get it, I am dead to the law, meaning the law is dead. I'm still alive. I'm dead to you. I'm alive, but I'm dead to you. Not that I'm dead. You see what I'm saying? But that, you know, I'm just dead to you. I, I'm alive to be dead to you. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, somehow I always was able to come out of verse 19 if I just stopped right there and I could, there's, there's been a break in this relationship, but I was still there until I hit verse 20. And then verse 20 is, boom, hey, dude, you're dead, period. If you're, in other words, I didn't just kill you to the law, if you will. I killed you to everything. I mean, that's what, the, and, and that's what, you know, like I said, Hebrews 
says in Galatians 6, 14, for um, I am crucified unto the world and the world is crucified unto me. How do you defeat the world? You don't. You die to it. All right. Now, again, we're talking about the fall of dominions here. We're talking about the fall of lords, things that definitely lord it over our life, okay? And without fully yet seeing this, we've at least come somewhat to the realization after 30 minutes of just gabbing about it that death is the key out and Christ is the key in. Death to the old dominions, Christ in us and us in Christ as the new or the kingdom of God. Isn't it interesting? It's called the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of good or right or righteousness or the kingdom of, you know. All right. <clears throat> now, let's get a little practical. Let's see if we can marry some of these truths together and make it real. The proof that we have changed dominions and are no longer under the old dominions has to do with how we presently relate to the law, that old dominion, to sin, to death, to the world. Did y'all catch that? Absolutely. I will. No, I, I will. <laughs> the proof that we have changed dominions. Okay. Have we changed dominions? Yes. There should be proofs. The proof that we have changed dominions and are no longer under the old dominion has to do with how we presently relate to those dominions. How do we relate to sin or how do we relate to the law or death or the world or you see what I'm saying? That's the proof. That's the, the proof is, is in a real it's not, it's not theological. It really, it's really not theological at all. It's just either true and true in Christ and true in me, or it's not true. There is no, I mean, do you kind of get what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say that I think so many people just fill their minds with theology without working anything out that that's okay. But the way I see it is, that there, that if that's true in Christ, that's not theological, that's true. And if that's true, and it's true in the, the Christ that's in me, then it's not theological, it's real. It's life, and it's real. I mean, it's real here. Because in a sense, we could say it's life and yet not, because Christians do it all the time, is why I'm saying that. Christians say, oh, well, it's just life. You know, why are you living it? No, but, you know, it's just life. <laughs> <coughs> and, you know, it's, it's like uh, Jesus coming to us and saying, well, you know, are you, how, you know, are you walking in the liberty wherewith I've made you free? Here, let me see. And he opens up and you got all these little kings and dominions and minions running around on the inside of you. Hey, hey, what about, you know, you got all this weird stuff happening on the inside of you. He's going, <clears throat> looks to me like um, you haven't even discovered, much less are able to stand fast in the liberty, the liberty that I have made you free with. All right, well, what if, let me just paint a little what if. What if instead of preachers and teachers and televisionists and evangelists, and uh, I'm not trying to put down, I'm just trying, I'm, this is a what if. <clears throat> we know this couldn't possibly be true. What if they, 
said, well, the answer is the anointing. Now, I want you to read through Galatians and tell me how many times the anointing is mentioned and how many times the cross is mentioned. Or any number of books. Uh, and not that I have a problem with the anointing, you know. Uh, I remember thinking one time, the, you know, the scripture in the Old Testament says, the anointing breaks the yoke. I was thinking the cross kills you. That's New Testament. That's New Covenant. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just think if the cross is the, the foundation and the ground for the new covenant, then why do I want to think about breaking something when I, I just want it gone and dead and buried and out of sight? All right. I guess what I was saying, though, before that is what if, what if preachers kept pointing to the anointing or, you know, if you'll come down to the altar, uh, some man of God or woman of God is going to pray for you and everything's going to be different. Any mention of the cross? No. Any mention of the liberty wherewith Christ made us free. Do you understand my wording there? I mean, not mine, that's Paul, that's Bible. Uh, nevertheless, what saith the scripture? You, you see what I'm saying? We're not even encouraging them to stand fast in the liberty of the cross wherewith Christ hath made us free. And in fact, we're not even hinting anything about death so that all of these things can continue to run around in there. I mean, what if, what if you were able to get them to the altars and go, Dominions, shut up for a week, you know, in the name of Jesus. And they did, but they're still there. And they're still, you know, and then they come back and you go, well, what do I do now, you know? Or let's say that, you know, what if it was minions and you cast them out? But you never fill them with something of what the truth is in Christ. And so the enemy comes back seven times worse than it was before. Jesus said that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I always walk a fine line because I want to tell you the truth. But some can think by saying the truth that that means I know all truth and therefore I'm God's man or something. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm dead. I'm crucified. It's as simple as that. I'm not. It's not that I'm not God's man. I'm not. And I believe that if there's any truth in this, that the Spirit of God will bear witness to Christ, will bear witness to the cross, will bear witness to, you know. I mean, I know it would be hard to depict, but you don't see people walking around with a chain and, you know, anointing hanging off of it or something. Or, or a, a throne. You know what I mean? Or, you know, hands being laid, you know. Or something, you know. I don't, you know, I'm just trying to picture all of the, and no, and all of those are in the Bible, okay. So I'm, I don't have a problem with that, but shouldn't things be set in proper order? And if those things are, are, um, you know, if 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 the body of Christ has cancer, shouldn't we not be coming to the rescue with band aids and aspirin? Well. Band-Aids and aspirin are in the Bible, too. You know, someone could say that, you know. Well, you don't see it in the Bible? Yeah, there's aspirin right there. If you got a headache, take it. But if you're dying and the old man, you know, Romans 7. Have you ever really looked at those scriptures, the real meaning of that? It says, I bear, who shall deliver me from the body of, the, of this death? <coughs> in the Roman days... If you murdered somebody, 
they would take that dead body and they would tie it to your body and they'd wrap it up and put rope around you and you'd walk around and as that thing decayed, it would begin to decay you. Does that sound yucky to anybody? Well, that's what we've been doing if we're not getting with Jesus. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? By being joined to another. By being joined to another. But the other isn't a body of death. It's a true vine. And we're a branch. And all that he is, not just all that he has, it's not like... Well, let's get hooked up to this vine, and he's going to shoot diamonds and rubies into us. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to picture, you know, all the stuff we're trying to get from Jesus, tumbling into our branch. We go, oh, praise God, look, you know. It's him connecting. <laughs> you can't get any better treasures in fact, doesn't it say that? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. And it's not diamonds and rubies. It's Jesus. And it's the hope of every branch. It's the hope of every branch. Because within that sap, which is his life, that is, that is, that is the thing that makes the vine strong, and, and I'm talking about the exterior, <clears throat> it's the life that's in it. The same life that Jesus has as vine and the life in the vine, the sap, goes into the branch. Same life. But the difference between that body of death is when, you're, when that thing's strapped on you and as it's corrupting, the corruption is corrupting you. The corruption is slowly taking you over. Whereas in this case with Christ, he's slowly taking you over. But, it, but within that, in other words, if you looked at the sap, you'd go, well, Jesus is, Jesus is just sort of a juicy juice, man. You know, I'm, I don't know. I'm, but, you know, it's just a, no. In that is the fruit and the ability to grow and to bring forth leaves and to spread out and to have life and to, and to shelter animals, you know, and da -da -da, on and on and on, you know. It, Christ crucified may not look like much to some people, but within him is all the potential of all the things we're trying to get apart from him. Things we're trying to get apart from him. Things, you know. Oh, I would like some, you know, big table. Oh, hmm, I'd like some of that, you know. You got angels back on the other side, dipping stuff and throwing it in our plate. You know, eh, could I have some of that? Could I have a little more of that? The same thing. We got all this. Well, now I got what I want. What are you having? What? What are you have? What? What are you having? I'm having all of it. I'm having none of it. I'm having Christ, and He'll provide, and will be. And if we haven't discovered that, you know, and I know, you know, we try. We <clears throat> so okay. I believe that, and then we we. We get out there and we fail and we go, well, where was Jesus? You have to stand fast in the liberty wherewith he has made you free. That means the cross has to become something more than a thing that Randy teaches. Because I don't know all of the cross yet. I'm still learning and hungering and wanting to know, but I'm not there yet. I'm not yet attained. So you have to turn from me. You know, this came to my mind the other day. If after I die, <clears throat> and you write something, or you minister, you're ministering somewhere or something, and somebody comes up to you and they say, uh, wow, you know, you really have the Lord. And you say, well, praise God, you know. And they say, 
But really, weren't you, didn't you sit under Randy Nussbaum's ministry? Remember that guy who was alive many years ago and he taught the cross and all this. Didn't you sit under his ministry for years? Yeah? Well, you know, didn't, didn't you sort of just, didn't you just get what he's shared with you? I want you to tell them if, if, if it bears witness by the Holy Spirit that anything that I'm pouring out or writing is life to you, he, the dead guy, Randy, he told me to tell you that only when the heart turns to the Lord do you see him and that he said that I could never, he, Randy could never give that to you and if he could have, you would have already had it. <laughs> And that you got it from the Lord, and it wasn't from Randy Nussbaum. Okay, would you, could you remember that? Some of you are going to be around a while. Please tell him that. And that I said, said oh, you know that guy that you're talking about? He spoke to me from the grave and wanted me to tell you this. Okay. It's not I, but Christ. All right. <clears throat> I love it when the next sentence starts with, in other words. <laughs> you know, you read a sentence, then you go off for 30 minutes and share, and then the next one's, well, in other words, and this is going to apply perfectly to my last sentence. <clears throat> so I'm going to read the sentence in front of it again. The proof that we have changed dominions and are no longer under the old dominions has to do with how we presently relate to the law, to sin, to death, the world, etc., in other words, God has premised all relations with us based on death with Christ. All relations with us is based on that cross, based on that death, and based on our death with him. Or there is no relationship with us as we might assume. Okay? And if... And if I mean, come on, why would, he, why would he just come and die on the cross? And why not just come down here and go, okay, I'm God. You know, y'all were worshiping me. I was up in heaven and in that cloud when you were in the wilderness. But I'm God now, and all relationships are going to come through me right here. Okay? You need healing? Come to me. You need help? Come to me. Need some finances? Come to me. All right, no cross for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't go that route. You know? But he, he didn't do that. that he, no, he did do that in the old covenant. <laughs> but some might not have heard, there's a new covenant, saith the Lord. There's a new covenant. And that new covenant is all based on the cross. When we say based on the cross, of course every Christian will go, oh, well, yeah, <clears throat> of course it is. No, the cross of your death and the cross of him rising as your resurrection and your life, him who is the fullness that filleth all in all, him that is alpha, and the omega. Well, what letter am I? <laughs> yeah, zero. <clears throat> Except for they would pronounce it Z over there. All right, so... <clears throat> It's all based on Christ's death. The Lord does not justify the old Adamic nature. <clears throat> he crucifies it. Therefore, there is no justification without the cross. But also, there is no cross that justifies that which does not include our death within it. The, if we're going to a Jesus for justification apart from a cross, then we're trying to get him to justify an Adamic nature. 
there has to be a cross before there can even be justification. And you say, well, Brother Randy, it's justification by faith. I know, we're going to talk about that. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> All right. From these things, we can see that our death with Christ is not some ambiguous death that mysteriously happened a long time ago. This is what I'm trying to get you to realize. And this is where faith comes in. <clears throat> it is not just some sort of mystical thing that happened a long time ago. And your faith is trying to reach in there somehow and your arm isn't long enough to go 2,000 years back. <clears throat> My next word is no. It is a death that liberates even now from the old nature, from the law, from the flesh, from the world. Liberates even now. Okay. But liberates how? Again, how, how, how? Through the cross, through death. Through death. Through death. All right. Let's go back to our picture of lining us up and then the devil. Had God killed the devil, there would be no increase of his government. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Well, you just made sure that the, the, the increase of his government just ended when you just killed the devil instead of us. But you crucify us, and then Christ comes in as not just Lord, but the Lord of life, the Lord of, of your motives and ways, and because you're dead and now he's the life, now there's an increase of his government. Now. Okay. So, we, so you have to break with that thinking. Okay, well, if we just, you know, if we had just shot Moses before he wrote down the law on that stone and then shot the devil before he got, you know, before Eve got over to that tree, you see what I'm saying? And, you know, just sort of run through the creation, killing everything. You know, maybe one day we'll have a time machine and we can go back and we can just kill these people who you know, did this. And then everything would be great. No, it won't. Because there isn't, stopping something doesn't fill something. Stopping the old doesn't mean that you're filled with his life unless it's the liberty wherewith he has made us free. Through death, through him as our resurrection. The liberty wherewith... To do it any other way chases off the enemy and leaves under other enemies alive. Us. Okay. If the devil deserves to die, so do we. I know you don't, you know. You say, well, you know, at least I'm not as bad as Hitler. You have the same Adamic nature. You just haven't been, you know, given. Yeah. You just haven't been given 800 generals that'll do anything you say regardless. You try giving you know, that and then an army that's got all this high-tech equipment for that age. And then you go, well, let's see, I think I'd like Austria. <laughs> at, and somebody says, at what cost? And you go, just give me Austria. You know, hey. I don't have to know what you did. Oh, man, I'm telling you. We don't know how bad we are. I do. I do. Not really. I, yeah, I do by looking into the face of Adam or looking into the face of the mirror. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Ten minutes. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> um, 
Identification with the death of Christ is not some sort of idealism, but has practical results as to which lordship we are actually functioning under. Which lordship are we functioning under? Well, I'm, I'm in the kingdom of God. What, lord, what dominion has control in your life? Well, you know, Jesus is dealing with that. Oh, you mean he's not lord yet? You know what I mean? He hadn't been raised in victory. But, I mean, those kind of justifications are allowed in the Christian church. They're allowed. And Christians like it. They want justifications without truth. But if you want Jesus, you're going to be confronted and it's not always fun, but it always results with an increase of Christ. And that's worth it if you love Jesus more than you love yourself. And there's the rub, isn't it? <clears throat> there's the rub. Because maybe, you know, we say, oh, I love you, Jesus. You know, I love you, you know. And then walk out and another dominion takes over, meets you at the door and goes, come on, let's go have some fun. <laughs> you know. Well, I know Jesus is happy because I, I spent an hour in there telling him how much I love him and spend the rest of the week with this guy. <laughs> Hi, Satan, you ready to go? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah, I got the car warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how we presently relate to these former lords listed above speaks louder concerning what dominion we are really under than a faith that claims Jesus is Lord while living ruled by other kingdoms. It speaks louder, you know. I remember in Bible school, when I was in Bible school, they would... They had a saying that says, we'd say something, they'd say, I'm excuse, they'd say, excuse me, I can't, you know, we'd say something spiritual, and they'd go, excuse me, I can't uh, hear your words because your life is speaking so loudly. You know, yeah, it was good. You'd kind of go, you know, at first you go, well, that hurt my feelings, you know, you know, it's like we touch the cross and we get a splinter and we go that hurt my feelings you know well, that's just a splinter off of that thing you're supposed to be dead you're supposed to be hanging up there with Jesus not going oh, oh don't throw the you know Satan's got fiery darts and you've got little splinters <laughs> I mean we're, we're a bunch of wow ass folks we really are we need to go after Jesus with all of our heart and whatever it takes I mean you know, I've often said if you're going after Jesus, you know, you're, you're running, you know, you're running the good race. Anybody seen chariots of fire? You know, you know, and you're running. Yeah, and when I run, I feel, you know, I feel the pleasure of God, I think is what he said, you know, stuff like that. I'm running, I'm going after the Lord, you know, and all of a sudden you, you fall and you, oh, you break your leg. You get, people go, I can't run anymore, you know. Well, drag yourself if you're going at Jesus, if you want Jesus, you know. You start dragging yourself and you, you fall down. No, I can't, I can't even walk anymore. Then start crawling, you know. And you, you crawl and drag your sky. I want Jesus. I don't care. You're not going, well, this is hard. You're going, I haven't got to Jesus the way I want to. And, I, you know, I told somebody, man, when it comes to it, I haven't got nothing, no breath left with my final strength. My arm will go out pointing in his direction, and I'll just die trying to get to Jesus. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he's worth it. He's worth it. We shouldn't be goofing off and all this stuff. Man, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's run. Let's crawl. Let's drag our whatever it takes. Let's keep going. Amen. Well, let's take a break and see if I can drag you back to class.